everything you know about crowdfunding is wrong. Here's why. Crowdfunding has covered a lot in the news, but here's the problem. Almost every story in the news about crowdfunding is basically wrong. Here's the three-part structure to pretty much every news story about crowdfunding. One, random guy puts random project on a crowdfunding website like Kickstarter. Part two, the project goes viral by some mysterious magical process and overnight, a million people have watched the video and there's been lots of news coverage all instantly. Part three, the money truck backs up to the project creator's house. Here's why that media story is wrong. It's because crowdfunding is not magic money. Just look at the term crowdfunding. You need your crowd first before you can get funding. And if you look at examples of projects in crowdfunding that have raised lots of money, those projects had lots of fans long before the crowdfunding started. But what does this all mean if you're a scientist and you wanna crowdfund for your research? After all, very few scientists have an audience and also very little science produces a product, at least not directly. Can crowdfunding still work for funding scientific research? That's the question we tried to answer through a study organized by Zen Fox, Jarrett Burns, Barbara Walker, and myself through an organization called SciFund Challenge. How did it work? Over the course of a year and a half, we ran almost 160 science crowdfunding projects in three rounds. And each round lasted three months. We asked scientists to sign up to be part of our crowdfunding experiment. And we vetted the scientists for scientific legitimacy. We trained the scientists in the basics of science communication. And in the third month, each scientist ran their crowdfunding project on the same site. We collected a ton of data along the way. And we put it all together to see, is there any connection between anything that we could find and crowdfunding success for science? Turns out, there was. What works for science crowdfunding success? Two things. The size of your audience and how much you engage with that audience during the crowdfunding period. So the total amount you raise in science crowdfunding depends on the total number of contributors you have. It's not about the one big donor. It's about how much of the crowd, the total crowd, is giving to your project. And how do you get the crowd to donate? There are two channels. First, Facebook. For scientists, Facebook friends tend to be family and real life friends. And there it's all about the raw number of family and friends you have. But there's a whole second channel that works differently and depends on your science outreach. This channel is all about page views to your crowdfunding site. There are three ways to get page views. Twitter presence, emailing your contacts, contacting the press. And so the bottom line is, the bigger your audience and the more you engage with them, the more money you get for your science crowdfunding. Science crowdfunding only really works if scientists are doing outreach. Why? Because in order to raise money through crowdfunding, you need an audience. And the only way scientists can do that is by talking to people about their science, not about their fundraising, about their science. All science can build a crowd, build an audience, not just sexy science or easily accessible science. But the real benefit here of all the science engagement isn't just funding for your research, it's more people engage with science and a more science engaged society is one that we all want to live in.